Hi again from the garden. So I'm out here this morning doing a few projects. The first thing I'm doing is planting some cut flower perennials for my garden. I have some more yarrow to plant and some astilbe to plant. So I wanted to show you what those are and where those are going. And then the other thing I'm doing is working on my dahlia bed. So if you've been following my channel at all, you know that we just finished up my pergola build and garden shed remodel. And so that frees up the rest of my dahlia bed space to plant the rest of my tubers, which I know they are late, but dahlias will bloom until frost. And so I sh still should be able to get a lot of good bloom blooms out of them. And then these are the dahlias that I planted a while ago as tubers and they are looking really good. So this morning I need to do some pinching on them because if you can see this one back here, it's getting really tall. So it's time. So I think first I'm going to pinch my dahlias, then I'll get the tubers planted and then I'll show you the perennials I'm planting. Okay, so my dahlia plants are about a foot or so tall, which from what I've read is the perfect time to pinch your dahlia plants. And I'm just using my snippers. Um, these are what I use to cut my flowers. I think they're the Fisker brand. They work great. So I'm just gonna come in and cut these right above the top set of leaves. And if I didn't pinch these, I would get some really nice blooms. But the reason that I want to pinch these is to get more blooms and taller stems. If you let dahlias go, that center stem can get really thick and actually hollow. And so when you cut it, then it won't absorb the water very well. So I wanna make sure that I get as many blooms as possible with as many usable stems as possible. So let me start pinching these. I'll move the camera a little bit closer so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so these plants are about a foot tall and I'm gonna come in right at the top here you can see these, this set of leaves and then there's a growth point coming up above it. I'm just gonna cut right above this set because there actually is new growth right in there already. There we go. So that top leaf is cut off. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So the top set of leaves, I'm just gonna fold back and this whole growth point I'm gonna cut off. There we go. And I don't know if you can see that, but this is already hollow in the center, but there are brand new growth points starting. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all of these plants. Okay, so that was really easy. That took me all of about 30 seconds. Um, this plant behind me, I actually took that down two sets of leaves and the center stock was completely hollow. So that was the perfect time to do that. So now let me show you the other end of this bed because that's where the rest of my dahlia tubers are going. And so I'm gonna be taking the weeds out of there and amending the soil and planting those tubers. Okay, so here's the end of the bed that I just pinched all the plants for. And then here's the area that needs to be planted. What a disaster. So my pergola, here's the post for my pergola. That goes right in the middle of the bed and I did not want to plant this area until my pergola was completely finished. So now that that's done, I can plant this. So I have the soil just broken up a little bit to loosen it. I'm gonna pull all of these weeds and I'm going to amend it with an organic garden soil, which I'll show you what that is. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plant my tubers. Okay, that area is all weeded. So much better. So I'm gonna start getting this ready to be planted up. So I'm gonna start getting this space ready for my dahlia tubers now. I've already broken up the soil a little bit with a potato fork just to loosen it because it was pretty hard and compact. I want to move my whole garden to a no-dig method so I don't want to till it up or anything. But to amend this spot, I'm going to be using an organic garden soil. The brand is Nature's Care and it has all kinds of good things in it like kelp meal and worm castings. So it'll really add a lot of nutrients to the soil. So let me get that added to the top and then I will start planting my dahlia tubers. Okay, so my planting bed is ready to go. So I'm in the workroom um, inside my photography studio. I'm sorting out all the rest of my dahlia tubers. I probably lost a few because it is getting so late in the season and they have just been sitting in storage. But I'm gonna sort through all of them and see what I have left and then go out and get them planted. And as I go through them, 
I'm gonna clean them up too. So some of these, um, like this is one from Eden Brothers. This is called the Romantic Mix. But as I'm going through these, I'm gonna be cleaning them up too. So I'm gonna take off a lot of the old roots. I'm gonna clean the dirt off and then cut any broken necks and anything like that. So let me just show you a little bit of that. I'm gonna start with this bag from Eden Brothers because I can see some green growth coming out of it, which means it's ready to get in the ground. And before I take it out of the bag, I'm gonna write a label because as I get these cleaned off, I'm setting them over on some craft paper on another countertop, all labeled so that I know exactly what everything is. Okay, so can you see this clump of tubers? Look at that big green growth on it. Now these look a little dried out, but I think they'll be okay just because of this growth. So I'm gonna clean some of these old roots off. I'm just gonna cut them off with the scissors. And then there's a few broken necks, which that happens in shipping, it's not really a big deal. I'm gonna cut any of those off because those can rot underground. There actually isn't a lot on this one. These tubers look pretty dried out, so I hope they're okay. But the growth is really encouraging. All right, I think this one is as good as it's gonna get. So I'm just gonna keep going through the tubers. I'll show you some of the better ones when I come to them. So I'm going through a lot of my single tubers and they look way better than the clumps. Look at this little guy. These single tubers that I ordered from various vendors are really firm and have growth points on them that look really nice. I think they'll take off right away. So I'm just gonna keep labeling and I'll show you a little bit more towards the end. So I am through all of my single tubers. They all looked really good. I have found that keeping dahlias for this long, this late in the season, the ones that were wrapped in plastic that did not have air exposure to them definitely are storing a lot better than the ones that have air exposure, which makes sense because those dried out. But the ones that came in plastic really look good. So I'm just going through a few more of my clumps here. Again, I'm just cleaning them off. I'm removing any broken necks. They all seem to have growth. So I'm labeling them and sorting them all out and then I'm gonna get them all in the garden. And one of the things I'm labeling them with too is this garden marker. Anything else will fade, so you wanna make sure to use one of these when you label your tags. Look at the growth on this one. Holy moly. Okay, so here is what I ended up with. There are about 30 more tubers and clumps that need to go on the ground. So this area is really getting in full sun right now, so I apologize about the lighting, but my soil is all amended and everything is ready to plant, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Now when I put my dahlia tubers in the ground, I'm putting them about four to five inches under the soil. That looks about right. Now dahlias are really heavy feeders, so I'm gonna add a little bit of compost to the hole, and then I'm gonna add some Biotone starter fertilizer as well. I'm gonna mix it up, and then the tuber, you wanna lay on its side and you wanna make sure that the growth point is going upward. So I'm just gonna lay my dahlia tuber in the hole, cover it up and quickly label it so that I know exactly where it is. And that's it. So I'm gonna get this whole bed planted. Most of the tubers are going in this spot. The rest of them, I won't have room for all of them here, so the rest of them are going in the bed behind me next to the other pergola post.
Okay, this entire bed is planted. I spaced these about 18 inches apart, and when I got these planted, I realized I only put three rows deep on this one, and I did four here. But I think they'll be okay, because they're planted later in the season, so they may or may not get as big. But what a relief to finally have these in the ground. Now, a couple things about dahlias and what I have read and what I am doing. I am not watering these in until I see really good growth coming up over the ground because you don't want your tubers to rot in the ground. Now again, at this point, they can probably use a little moisture, but I'm still gonna do that. I'm not gonna water them in until I see some good growth coming up out of the ground. And then just like the other ones, once they're up about a foot, I'm gonna pinch them off. So that checks that project off the list, thank goodness. So the next thing I need to do today is plant some of my cut flower perennials that I ordered. And that bed should be in the shade by now, hopefully. So let me go do that. Okay, so I am over in the south side of my garden now in the flower bed that is on the north side of the neighboring building. So this area gets quite a bit of shade during the afternoon, but it does get some really strong early morning and late afternoon sun. And I am out here planting the cut flower perennials that I want to add to my garden. So the first ones that I'm going to be planting actually are going on the outside of my fence in my cottage garden area, and that is some more yarrow. I have quite a bit of yarrow already growing, mostly white, and I have realized that I absolutely love yarrow in my bouquets. It adds a really good texture and it has a really good vase life. So I have some white planted already, and then earlier this spring I planted some moonshine yellow and the, um, just the yarrow mix. I planted six plants of those. So I recently went online to a website called New Garden Plants and I ordered some more yarrow. I am planting the Sassy Seduction, the Saucy Seduction, the Millie Rock Rose, and then also a pink color, um, something taffy. I'll put it up on the screen. Um, but some of those I got from that New Garden Plants website, which I love to order from. And then the others I just got at the local Home Depot. Now the other perennial that I'm planting today, those all did come from that New Garden Plants website, and that is a stilby. I do not currently grow a stilby, but the reason I chose that is for one, I love the texture of it, and I thought it would really add to the cut flower bouquets. And two, it grows really good in a shaded area, which is perfect next to this neighboring building because right up next to the building is pretty much shade all day long and so I wanted something um, I wanted a perennial that was constant along the side of the building that grew well in shade so that I could just plant on the outside of the bed with something that goes well in Sun every year um, like all the zinnias that are growing in front of me so the astilbe I have um, sitting right to the side here so let me show you the varieties of those I have bridal veil I have two of those. Um, I have the Milk and Honey. I have Maggie Daly. And I have a Montgomery. So first I'm gonna go ahead and get the Astilbe planted and then I'm gonna go to the outside of the fence and get my Yarrow planted. And to put these in the ground, I'm just putting some Biotone fertilizer in the hole with the plant, which is a starter fertilizer. I'll water them in thoroughly, and then they should just take off. Now, I don't think I'm going to be harvesting blooms off of them this season, but next year I should have really great blooms from them. Okay, so my astilbeer are planted. There is one back here, one here, and one here. This is also an astilbe. Um, I planted that probably a few weeks ago. And then on the other side of that big barn door I have, these are all of my zinnias. Volunteer sunflower, I'm just letting it go. Here's a few yarrow plants I have. So the other astilbe are right along here, along the back. Right in front of my delphiniums that are definitely done. Okay, time to plant the yarrow. Okay, so my yarrow is all planted in my cottage garden area on the outside of the fence. So I have three plants right across here. I have a couple tucked right in the middle here between my bee balm, my salvia, and Russian sage. And then the last two are really tiny plants and those are right in front of my daisies here. By the way, check out my Lysianthus. They all have buds on them. I'm really excited to see these bloom. 
Okay, so that's it for this garden video. That's two more projects I can check off the list. I think I'm actually done planting for the year. Unless I find some more perennials to buy, of course, which I'm sure I will. So stay tuned for a lot more weekly videos. I'm sure I'll be showing you all the market bouquets that I make every week for the farmer's market. And then now that it's July, I think it's probably time for another cut flower garden tour and a vegetable garden tour because both have completely changed since I did my last tours. So I probably better show you what they look like now. So stay tuned, we'll see you soon.